intro. Now entering into my late 20s, I recognize that this is an extremely exciting time in my life. I don't want to be in the middle of my 30s and wish I would have been more appreciative and present to the feeling of being where I am right now. When in your adolescence, it feels like all of the lessons are crammed into a really short amount of time. And once you hit adulthood and you're on your own and navigating this really big world, the lessons hit hard. I look at photos of myself from my early 20s to now and I see a completely different person. The younger version of myself has no idea the type of thoughts are existing within us right now. I just hope I'm making her proud. I'm making this video for the part of myself that still exists in me that's curious if their situation will ever change. But also for young adults that are in search of a voice that they can trust. I can still recall all of the complex feelings that arise within our early 20s because I'm still there. I can be that friend to also remind you to breathe deeply, that you are fine, and even if times are hard, be compassionate with yourself because the bad times won't last forever and you still have time. So here are 28 things in 28 years. Your life design is made by you and it doesn't have to make sense to anyone else. And for a long time I used to tell myself, man, maybe if I chose this path, my life would be so much easier. Man, maybe if I was good at X, Y, Z, I'd have this type of career and this lifestyle and I'd get all the things that I want, but that's not true. Okay, any path you choose will have its trials. Stop assuming that your positive attributes aren't just as marketable. Be present in who you are, be proud of who you are. Because believe it or not, you are cool too. If you're not intentionally using your time to think about what you want your life to become, someone will use your time to make their life what they want. For a long time, I got super overwhelmed with thinking too far ahead into the future because of the lifestyle that I had. I could barely think about making it past the week. And I had to realize that that's what they wanted. They wanted to keep me small, so I had a fear towards making my dreams come true or putting forth the effort because of the resources that I had. Your job is not your life and you should keep those separate. I think early on, you should just establish a healthy work-life balance so you can pace yourself throughout the year. I think what I've noticed now is that so many people are able to work from home that the lines are blurred from working and having your own time to yourself. Um, I hope they create some type of union or something gets talked about because I don't think it's fair that because you have the luxury to work from home, people are making you work a lot more. I don't know. It just doesn't seem right. Your standards aren't unrealistic. They just put fear in the hearts of people that want to waste your time. And just because someone doesn't have standards, you shouldn't feel uncomfortable at the ones that you have. You're good. If you put yourself on a sales rack, you can't get upset that people can't see your worth. If we don't think we're worthy, no one is going to argue that for us. So it starts with us. It's how we choose ourselves. It's how we honor our time. It's how we respect our own boundaries. And it all comes full circle for the life that we want. The person who talks about their close friends to you is talking about you to their close friends. And everybody has their own definition of what a friend is and everyone should do what really resonates with them. But in my experience, any person that uses their friends as hot topics just because they can't really stand the silence of their own life isn't someone that I can trust. And as I'm getting older, I realize or I've come to realize that Having exclusivity in your life is extremely important and I feel like longevity is attainable when you have that exclusivity. Finding your voice is worth more than any degree or certification and I wish people viewed it as such. A lot of times in interviews and in any type of audition setting, I was able to excel further because of how I was able to use my voice. When I'm presenting myself to someone for the first time, I'm not thinking of the best thing to say for a person to like me. I'm just saying what resonates with me and people either choose to like me or not. But being intentional about how you show up in a room, what your morals are, what you feel and how you can articulate, it matters. I realized that as a creator or an artist, it wasn't enough for me to make things. Now I'm more intentional about what I want to say, 
how I want to be remembered and what I want to leave behind. And in my creative process, it's made the journey so much more freeing because I start off with that type of objective. Age does not beget wisdom. You know, older men are not better. Um, older women are not better. I've went through stages in my life where I've allowed so many older men to come into my life and assume that they had this type of authority because they were older than me. But at the end of the day, you can have as many experiences as your life can allow. But if you're not learning from any of those experiences, what do you really have to teach someone? Enough people see your potential and know what you have to offer, but there could be two things of what could be happening. Either they pretend not to see in hopes that you don't ask for what you deserve, or they do see, they just don't have really much to offer you in your journey and that's okay too. But don't think or assume that your light does not exist. You can do something for months and years and no one notice and that's okay. As long as what you're doing is for you, that's all that matters. Leading with kindness is cool. I think growing up in a community where a lot of women kind of had this guard up, they naturally had to do that to protect themselves. I was always looked at as someone that was naive because I was kind. And that's not really the case. I know because of the type of jobs that I've had, I'm able to enter in certain rooms and be respected because of how I care myself. Being cold, being kind of jaded in your communication with people, basically excluding yourself doesn't make you powerful. A lot of the people that said that to me, I know with the type of culture that they resonate with, they would never be able to enter into the rooms that I can enter into because of who I am. So we can't control how people choose to treat us, act towards us, respond to us. All we can control is ourselves. And I refuse to change who I am just because someone is treating me poorly. Being kind and generous and loving is always going to be way cooler. Give others the same amount of grace that you want people to give you. Um, in my experience, I am really hard on myself and I had to get myself out of that because of how I treated myself. Um, it kind of it kind of mirrored itself in how I treated people in relationships. I never gave anyone the benefit of the doubt. If you mess up one time, you're out. I don't know. <laughs> I know it sounds bad, but like, I don't, I don't know. I just assume people know what they're doing and sometimes they're, they don't. Communication is important. Give people the benefit of the doubt and you deserve grace so you should give grace to others. It's okay to ask for help. A lot of the times the pride and ego can get in the way and it will keep you from your greatest blessing because you feel like you're looked down upon because you actually just need help. And that's another topic for a different video, but ask for help. You can have all of the manifestation rituals in the world, but if you have even a speck of doubt, your practice will be for nothing. Your dream life can happen for you. It's possible to have that much belief in yourself. For example, in all of the videos that I make, I created this culture within myself that I really don't care because even if there's five people viewing, I created this scenario in my mind that one of the five people is Beyonce, so I'm okay with that. Which leads me into my next one. Be delusional. I'm just at a point in my life now where I can't afford not to be. If I'm not putting energy towards believing in myself or engaging with the future version of myself that I want to see now, I don't believe I'm giving the universe enough information to let them know that I'm ready for exactly what I want. Consistency. Everyone talks about it. There's nothing to it but to do it. Sometimes it takes a while to see results. And for me, it took almost a year to six months of being consistent to actually see some type of shift in the algorithm that pushed my content forward. So if it can happen to me, it can happen for you. Social media has made spirituality kind of surface level. And I just wanted to be a part of letting people know that it is anything but that. When I started to practice mindfulness and journaling, I was able to unlock a dimension within myself that has more wisdom than I could have ever imagined. That version of myself allowed me to heal, to prepare myself for the next level in my life because where I'm going, I can't enter that space with any trauma or baggage. So that all happened when I became intentional about 
my spiritual sovereignty and what was important to me and who I wanted to become. And when I really stripped the layers of everything in my journey that changed me and got to the core of who I am, I started to feel better. I started to see possibilities for myself. And I had this inner voice that gave me so much knowledge and information and wisdom and unconditional love that I just started to share it. And once I did, an entire world opened up for me. So keep going. If you're in that journey too, I just want to advise you to keep going. True love exists and it's a choice. You know, you're not going to feel all lovey-dovey and mushy and gooey every single day. But if you're constantly curious about the person that you're with, if you still look at them with eyes of love just to try to understand them and have the patience and grace and... Once you accept that they are human too and they're not perfect, which is something that I'm still very much working on, but with relationships now, I just want to remain curious about the person. I don't want to feel like I have them figured out because once I do, I'm just kind of like, you're predictable, it's boring, you're never going to change, I don't really see growth happening for the both of us. It's not something that I want to exist in, so remain curious about your partner and I feel like in that curiosity and just learning that person love will grow but i'm still learning i'm still trying to figure out what real love is i'm still finding better ways to love so this is just where i'm at in my journey i'm sure in a couple of months it's gonna change now is not the time to sit and wait for opportunities um as an actress i thought that one day someone would see me and i would get this opportunity to perform and share my passion with the world but it hasn't happened for me yet and instead of sitting around and moping and crying about it I'm just going to continue to perform I'm going to continue to live my life because acting is a life journey and it's not going to leave me anytime soon so in the meantime I have to do what I need to to create opportunities for myself because at the end of the day I'm a storyteller Um, hopefully I get an opportunity to tell other people's stories but it all starts with me The truth is only uncomfortable to a lie that's not meant to last. Um, We all kind of know what it's like to be manipulated. And once you're getting close to the truth is when shit kind of starts to hit the fan. They try to make you feel super uncomfortable or that you're wrong for wanting to get to the truth. And anytime that is happening, run. Don't even try to figure out the truth. Whatever you're feeling may be enough reassurance that you're not in the right place or you're not in a place that is in alignment with where you need to be. Just leave. I realize at my age, I don't want to be around people that lie. So if you're my age or older and you're lying to create whatever fantasy in your mind, I it's just, that's too much. Forgive your parents. A part of my spiritual awakening was asking for forgiveness and how could I fully understand what that means? How could I fully ask for forgiveness from my heavenly father? if I didn't know what it mean to have forgiveness within myself. So the journey to forgiveness, it's like, it's so powerful. It means so much. It's such a large part of just the life experience in general. It starts with your parents. And I know a lot of people have had different experience with your family and your parents, some things that are unforgivable. I understand that. And that's a part of your journey. I don't want to, I'm going to speak for myself and hopefully it resonates with someone, but Forgiveness is key. Once I started to forgive my parents for doing the best that they could, genuinely, it helped me understand what it means to forgive myself and to ask for forgiveness. So do that. Write things down. That changed my life. When the thoughts would come to me and I didn't know what to do with them, instead of sitting in them and letting them fly away, I actually would put them in my notes. Um, It allowed me to explore a deeper part of myself and it has opened so many doors for me just being able to share what goes on in my mind. Um, There's a lot happening in our human consciousness collectively that is actually very interesting right now. I think an awareness is being heightened right now 
and we're evolving and I'm so interested to see how my peers are responding to who I am now that they hear more of the way that I think but also hearing other people in the way that they're expressing their human beingness and um, the things that I can learn from their embodiment it's that's something for a different day but that's something that I'm really passionate about yeah this is something that I learned through an acting exercise that I've kind of built my life journey around it's stand in your choice commit to the moment and be open to whatever outcome have an objective for your life when I do character analysis or scene studies and I'm diving deep into discovering who this person is that I want to portray or that I'm trying to embody I kind of created that practice with myself to push me forward into my life and it's pretty early in that process but so far it's been pretty refreshing and I see life through a different gaze now because of that intention that I'm setting maybe you should do it too stand in your choice commit to the moment be open to all possible outcomes listen more than you speak we have two ears and one mouth for a reason a lot of the times in heated discussions I realize, one, some people only listen to respond instead of listening to understand. So in any type of conversation or interaction with a person, listen more than you speak. You get to know who you're talking to a lot more, maybe to protect yourself or just to scope a person out because I'm really observant. And also... It's just refreshing to hear another person, like stop trying to finish everyone's sentences. Stop assuming that you know a person. I think you'll get a much better outcome and build deeper connections with the people that you're around if you actually take that into consideration. Life is meant to be enjoyed. And yeah, I'm young and there's a lot that I want to do and there's a lot that I want to tackle. There's a lot that I want to achieve. But at the end of the day, I can't continue to be hard on myself if I'm not there yet. I deserve happiness, I deserve peace, I deserve luxuries, and I can give myself those things. I can always return home to myself and enjoy just being alive. And in this society or in this culture where I'm supposed to do everything, X, Y, Z, hustle this, money, that, like, it's like, okay, yeah, that's cool, and I'm not knocking that at all, but also, like, there's also joy in the very small things. You don't have to do these grand osseous things or super great things to live a great life. And yeah, be at peace with who you are. Enjoy every living moment because it's a gift. So people are living too far into the future and the past and they're not really appreciative of where they are now. And when I was doing that, I wasn't happy and I had a lot of tension in my chest and I was really anxious. And once I really felt the gratitude of just simply being alive, I was just able to breathe a lot easier because I know a lot of people don't have the privilege to wake up every day and just do what they love. So I'm going to take that into consideration and honor my life and honor the present moment because... I'm never going to get this time back. Don't be afraid to start at the bottom. I think most times our pride and our ego will limit us from something amazing just because of how it looks in the beginning stages. Most of us are just way too proud for humble beginnings. Honestly speaking, if the judgment from others is at the forefront of your mind and what you're about to do, maybe what you're doing isn't what you're meant to do because if it's something that's actually for you, other people's opinions on it shouldn't matter yeah I know I've said a lot um I hope something that I said resonates and that you're able to connect with my words and feel that I'm coming from a genuine place when I share these things if you have any stories that you want to share about anything that kind of stuck out to you I'd love for you to share them in the comments below um thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far hope you like comment and subscribe and I will see you all in my next video bye